Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. So we're going to look at what is called the Sanatana Dharma, or the eternal truth, or the eternal way, in relation to what we actually see manifested in our world around us. Our world is one that is obviously one of competition, division, and just embracing the concepts of duality to the extreme. We see it. We see it in the corporate you know, in the corporate world, we see it's all based on competition and greed. And it's based on the little me, you know, the ego. And we are manipulated through the ego on a constant basis. We are taught to be competitive, you know, to work against each other and to strive to overcome each other often instead of working together. And it's all about winners, you know, the winners and the champions. It's been so ingrained into our consciousness in this society. And it is obviously manifesting as a, a real sickness and plague upon the earth with endless wars, with nothing but pollution and the corporate greed that has just so toxified this entire society and world. And we see it in basically building up this idea of patriotism, where one country is better than another, where one race is better than another, where one religion, nationality, creed is better than another. And really, you know, it's, it's almost comical and cartoonish for those that can see the manipulation of the division that is used to basically keep us in control, keep us in the dark. And thus, you know, we have been in the Kali Yuga. We've been in a dark age, an age in which we just don't understand the greater truths of reality and, and what we can actually become. Instead, we're always facing off the left blaming the right, the right blaming the left, and nothing getting anywhere. We're here to awaken from the illusion of our separateness, and that's Tich Nhat Han, and uh, that is so true. That's why we are here, and more and more people are waking up to this, and this is, again, that eternal truth, which is known in the East and many of the f great philosophies and religions of the East, which are not truly understood by most Westerners, but more and more Westerners are understanding. We see it in nature. We see unity consciousness in, in nature always in action. Look at the ants. It's amazing what they can do and achieve together. Overcoming obstacles that separately they would have no way of overcoming. But together they can overcome and they could thrive. We see it with bees as well. Uh, it's, you could look at it as a hive mentality. In other, in other words, understanding the greater good. Understanding that alone and separate, it's a much tougher battle against the elements, against everything. It doesn't have to be that way. And we don't have to be battling each other. We can be working together and creating newer ways of doing things, better lives, true harmony. And it starts with recognizing the illusion. The illusion is that we are separate. If we just look at the human body, there's all sorts of things living in you that are not you, and you wouldn't be able to be alive without them. This is part of how, you know, God or source or prime creator works. We are all interdependent instead of truly independent. And we couldn't exist without some of the bacteria that are in the body. And these things in your microbiome actually outnumber the cells in your own body 10 to 1. And that's okay, because that's the way it's intended to be. We see what cancer can do to a body and how it can destroy it. And again, it doesn't have to be that way. Because the body left to its own devices in the proper environment can get rid of cancer. Cancer is a symptom of our culture. It's a symptom, a symptom of our mindset and what we have accepted. We see the fractal nature of the universe as above, so below. And as we were just talking about your microbiome with all these things living in you, you are part of the microbiome of something much larger. 
This reflection is obvious, and it's all over and all around us. If, if we go out of the Vedas, we see the life of Brahma, which is the creator god, equates to 311 trillion years. And we see a day of Brahma is 4.32 billion years. So what we're recognizing is that we're living in a being. We are actually living inside of a being. You know, you are actually in the mind of God. And so when we look at the lifespan of some cells, certain cells in the intestines, they only, they only have a lifespan of about four days. We know there are certain insects uh, that might only live a few days. There are bacteria that just live for moments. So to them, we are living you know, millions and billions of years equivalently. But ultimately, everything is consciousness. And this, again, is getting into the lifespan of Brahma. They recognized that we are living in an entity. We're a part of a bigger entity. And we can look at it like, well, wait, we are a part of the Earth. We're a part of the Earth. And so we are in the Earth's microbiome. The Earth itself is in the microbiome of the galaxy. The galaxy itself is just a part of the microbiome of the universe. The universe is just a part of the multiverse. This goes on forever. So this is part of our reality. And it's recognized over here, you know, out of the Vedas and the Puranas, that there's 432,000 humanoid races in our multiverse. So, you know, that's understanding that there are a myriad of different worlds, not only physical worlds in the 3D, uh, worlds in various densities, dimensions. This, this is just known in this uh, in the Hindu universe, it's taken for granted. And we are multidimensional beings, which science has found out now to be the truth. So the Sanatana Dharma is the original name of what's popularly called Hinduism. But Hinduism is referred to the people uh, of the Indus Valley area, the people that lived in that area. But really, when we look at Hinduism, it's the same basic philosophy uh, that we see all native um, native cultures embracing. Uh, basically a shamanistic point of view, whether we're talking Australian Aborigines, whether we're talking native North Americans, native South Americans, uh, native Afrikaans, anywhere you go, the indigenous pe people believed and knew just instinctively, ultimately, we're all one. Because every one of us is just a cell in the body of something bigger. And so we could live in with knowledge of that, which then dissolves this illusion of separateness. When we realize that we're a part of something bigger, and we don't have to be constantly competing with our you know each other, striving against each other, winning something or losing something instead we could be working together understanding that we're, we're we are actually codependent not only on each other but in everything in this reality so this is something that the indigenous peoples around the globe knew and you know it it took me a little bit to uh, realize this but i realized it's decades ago uh, that basically what we would call Hinduism, which is really a, a huge collective. Uh, the real accurate term is Sanatana Dharma. So it's kind of a code of ethics. It's a way of living. It's an understanding of the multiverse around us where we can achieve moksha, which is enlightenment and liberation from the wheel of Dharma and, and karmic retribution. Every action that we do emanates outwards, creating an energy pattern out into the universe. So the more benevolent our actions, the better. And it releases us from our karmic debt over time. It's way more than just a religion. It's, it's a way of living and understanding when we recognize that separateness is really an illusion. Then everything changes totally it completely changes and when you realize that ultimately everything is consciousness 
And you know, you're know you not going to go to oblivion when you die. You're not necessarily going to go to a torturous hell or even you know a, a magnificent heaven. Everything depends on where our consciousness is and our ability to overcome the law of cause and effect through you know proper right action and understanding because ignorance breeds sorrow ignorance breeds division a lack of understanding breeds the conditions that we see on this planet and so if we break it down sanatana denotes that which is basically beginningless and formless or eternal and then dharma means to hold together so it's, it could be viewed as the law of the universe, the natural, ancient, and eternal way. But it's the understanding, ultimately, that source lies within all of its creation. So if source is in me and source is in you, we should respect and understand that. It changes things. When we view it as if God, prime creator, source, is something totally different than its creation, then the illusion of separateness can really take hold. And then we could start to view everything as we have, where it's just simply competition, survival of the fittest. You know, pure Darwinism to the core. But it's not really the case. Source is within all of us. All of us. And the beauty of this is when we have this realization, it's, it's not about faith. Because you know, there's a huge difference between faith and knowing. The only way is to experience for oneself. So by its nature, Santana Dharma is God-centered rather than prophet-centered. Experience-based rather than belief-based. And beyond any historical date of founding, we, there is no one founder. There is no one person that you could point to and say, okay, this, this person started this. It's not the case. It's the process of growth which comes from the seed. It's inherent in and inclusive of all. It's in the world while also above the world. So it's imminent and it's transcendent. It's the whole and the parts. And it's loving of all and excluding of none. So that is, is a beautiful thing. So it recognizes that the greater portion of human religious aspiration has always been unknown, undefined, and outside of any institutionalized belief. Now that's key, because what has been used against us it as a way of control, and thus a way of bringing darkness even more into the world, is just the opposite. The power structure the making, you know, having a system of beliefs in which we have to go along a certain line to get to God, to get to source. We don't have to. It's, it's already within us all the time. You know, the entire universe lies inside you. You don't need to go to any person to find it. You don't have to have any set of prescribed beliefs. It's a matter of finding what is already there inside you and growing that seed. Why would one person's thoughts be better than another's? It's best for us to, to find our own center and our own sanatana dharma. That's why there are so many different forms out there, but ultimately the principles stay the same. The nature of it stays the same. And again, it's about finding the unity of all, recognizing that we're all part of something so much bigger so much bigger yes there is you know a, a law of cause and effect so we could the more we could start to put out the positive vibes the better and that is embracing the unity of all through diversity because creator decided to make all forms of life there's so many different forms of life out there all unique expressions why should one be put above another? Why should we be patriotic about any one form of life because of a location where it is? And, you know, so many of us are who are being brought up in different parts of the world. 
don't you think anybody would naturally want to feel patriotic about their country, for instance, or their way of doing things? It's just instinctive and natural. So we start to recognize that source is in everything. And source chose diversity as a way of expressing itself. So we should embrace that diversity. And that is a beautiful thing. And so we, when we get in line with the principles of this, we're no longer viewing everything as a struggle against opposition. We recognize that there's simply a lack of understanding that many need to come to. And that only comes through in internal work. And obviously in this society, so many people are just doing all they can to just make their bills. And that's part of the problems with this society as well. If more people had more time to go within, and again, that's a choice as well, because we could choose to step out of the system and it's not always easy. But the more we could step out of the system, the more we can cultivate that and internal knowing which leads to the eternal truth so we are most definitely at the cusp of greater understanding also when we see what's happening in the scientific world and quantum physics really goes totally in line with this as you see this article this was from the 13th of july of 2019 first ever photo of quantum entanglement because ultimately everything is entangled everything is one we are all energy we are all consciousness the mind is everything what you think you become if you believe in separateness then that is what you are you're separate you're creating that illusion of separateness if you believe you need punishment then you're going to create the condition and conditions where you're going to be punished if you believe in unity consciousness, then you will allow love to flow from your heart because you will have acceptance and understanding for all, and you'll have compassion for those that are in the dark. As we are all striving to learn and grow in this life, consciousness is in everything, and everything is in consciousness. So God is consciousness, not a creator. God is the source of creation itself. It is not he or she, it is not independent of you. It's the totality of everything. So if one calls himself God, I'm not talking about my personal self, the little self. I'm talking about the expression of the God self that rests inside of me, the verb, the energy, not the noun. Once you think God is a noun, person, place, or thing, you separate yourself from it and immediately become a limited being. That's what separates the believers from the knowers. And, you know, that is absolutely understanding. And understanding leads to bliss. So as we go into this period and start to recognize the oneness of all things, may you be blessed with abundant bliss and peace in this knowledge. Thank you for your support as always. God bless my friends and namaste.